yet approval once the road is known. Let come who will, but if they all turn home, the goal still awaits you. Go on alone. If you're seeking freedom in a marble mansion, oh, if you're seeking freedom, you won't find it there. For even when it's sunny, you'll be counting money, keeping up that showcase, your face lined with care. And if you're seeking freedom on a throne of power, oh, if you're seeking freedom, you won't find it there. For though men all obey you, what if they betray you? Tense you'll be and waiting for foes everywhere. But if you're seeking freedom, cast away desires. Why barter like a beggar, you've wealth everywhere. For never can you buy it, grasp and you deny it. Freedom can't be hoarded, it's free as the air. And if you're seeking freedom, seek it on the mountains. Got sunlight on your shoulders, the wind in your hair. For there's no one can hold you, boss about or mold you. Once your heart is free, you'll be king everywhere. For there's no one can hold you, boss 
about or mold you. Once your heart is free, you'll be king everywhere. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know them, this is Nayaswami Bharat and Nayaswami Asha. My name is Nayaswami Dharmaraj, and my wife, uh, Nayaswami Dharmini, and I help to guide the Ananda Los Angeles community. Today, <laughs> thank you for the support. <laughs> this morning's topic, or topics, are energy, success, and magnetism. And these are, at least energy and magnetism, are well understood on the physical level. We know about electricity and its relationship with magnetism. When you have electricity passing through a wire, it generates a magnetic field around it, like a magnetic aura around it. And no one disputes this. All the physicists swear by it. So do I. <laughs> so, taking this one step further as applied to our lives, given that our nervous systems are run on electrical impulses, electricity, therefore our bodies have electricity in them, therefore where there's electricity there's magnetism, therefore our bodies have some magnetic field. And again, physicists will grudgingly agree to this too. I say this because if magnetism and the concept of the aura and all of this is a challenge for you, we'll let that address it. So now, with that caveat, or that preamble, I should say, um, we can increase the magnetic field in a wire by increasing the flow of electricity or the flow of energy. Similarly, we can increase our own magnetic fields by increasing the flow of energy in our bodies. And so, if you will indulge me, I'll invite you to do a few tension and relaxations with me right now. Let's inhale, tense the double breath. I mean, sorry, tense the whole body. Throw the breath out. Twice more. And so that is takeaway number one from today's talk. <laughs> if you remember nothing else, remember in the time when you're feeling more, a need for more energy and a more magnetism, like when you have to give a talk, <laughs> then do some of those to get your energy up. Now, in the physical world, we tend to think of ele electricity more so than magnetism. I think it's because we've put electricity to so many more uses than magnetism. But really, physically speaking, they are the same force. They are considered equal. I said you can generate, by passing electricity through a wire, you can generate a magnetic field. Similarly, by creating a magnetic field around a wire, you can generate an electrical current through it. So they sort of work part and parcel. But Sri Yukteswar said that magnetism of the two, magnetism is the subtler force. We live in Dwapara Yuga, he said, the age of energy. And the next age, Treta Yuga, is when we will master the forces of divine magnetism, he said, from which all other energies, including electricity, are created. So somehow magnetism is a little more subtle. And we know the magnetic effect that people can have on us. You're around some people and you're instantly drawn to them. And some other people use, ooh, <laughs> maybe having a difficult day or a difficult incarnation, I think I'll steer clear <laughs> as best I can. So I had this experience of magnetism when I was in college. And for various reasons, I was to appear in a little procession with many other students and also Vice President Al Gore. He was speaking at my uh, school, at the engineering school, on the uh, anniversary of the creation of the first computer. And I was not altogether impressed with Al Gore at that time. And the reason for my hauteur was because he had written a book where I had heard he had claimed that he invented the internet. And so I thought, 
I beg your pardon, not that I had invented the internet, but somehow I felt, well, you certainly didn't. <laughs> to make matters worse, when he spoke at our school, he said technology is increasing without bound, faster than anything. It's increasing at a logarithmic rate. Now, logarithm is the slowest growing function <laughs> that there is. And he meant exponential, of course, but so we were just like, <laughs> okay. So I determined that when I was going to meet him, because before we appeared in this uh, little procession, he was going to meet us out back and shake hands with everyone, and they told us this and they prepped us. And so I was determined to say, not to be starstruck and not to be dazzled and to just say, nice to meet you. <laughs> so we, he went down the line of students and I was rehearsing my line <laughs> and then he got to me and said, Al Gore, nice to meet you. And the first thing that impressed me was how tall he actually <laughs> is, especially relative to myself. And I suddenly felt engulfed in this wave of magnetism. And I said, nice to meet you. <laughs> I would have done anything that he said in that moment. If he said, go get me a grilled cheese sandwich, I would have run off and gotten it. And that surprised me because that magnetism acted on me against my will against my choice, against all my premeditated plans. And so I saw there's something to this magnetism stuff. Of course, we all uh, feel that magnetism coming from Swami Kriyananda. I was there when some of the actors who were in the movie uh, about Ananda that's being made met him, and they came out just uplifted and dazed. And one of them said, I thought this was going to be just another job. He said, this is a spiritual experience. And he was transformed from when he had gone down there to when he had come out. Of course, we all felt that on Monday when Swamiji gave his talk. And on Monday afternoon, he was speaking with a dear friend, uh, Jamuna. And she said, Swamiji, I really uh, enjoyed your talk. And he said, he smiled and he said, but everyone is saying that. What was so wonderful about it? And she said, Swamiji, it was the peace that I felt in my heart from hearing you speak. And she said, and that peace has lasted throughout this whole day. That's a transfer of magnetism. And so Yogananda said, now coming to the topic of success, magnetism for success, Yogananda said that we can attract success to us by having powerful magnetism and having the right magnetism. So he was commissioned to, uh, sorry, he had commissioned an artist to paint a picture of Lahiri Mahashai. And the artist, though professional, did not do a perfect job at capturing the divine aspect of Lahiri Mahashai. So uh, Yogananda said, how long did it take you to master your art? And the man said, 20 years. And Yogananda said, 20 years to convince yourself that you could paint? And the man said, I'd like to see you do as well in twice that length of time. And he stormed off. Before he stormed off, Yogananda said, give me a week and so to heap insult upon it. So the man thought. And throughout, throughout the next week, Yogananda attempted to paint a portrait of Lahiri Mahashai. And he worked at it. And after a few false starts, he completed a portrait. And then he had someone invite this artist back and present the uh, portrait in a conspicuous place, and Yogananda hid himself. <laughs> and the man came back and said, who painted that? It's much better than mine. And Yogananda said, you want to know who painted it? <laughs> Swamiji includes this story. Uh, and after telling it, he writes, this is in the new book on Patanjali, he writes, in anything you do, Get in tune with whatever consciousness it takes to do it well. Above all, develop the right magnetism. So how do we develop the right magnetism in pursuing our goals? I want to share two additional tools for this. One is already given by Swamiji's statement. Get in tune with the consciousness it takes. 
get in tune with the, the goal, the topic. Make friends with it. See it as possible. And so I'll share a little story with you about a case where my attitude was the opposite of that. I was living in India with Dharmini. We were serving at Ananda in Gorgon. And I had been asked to, to uh, basically present business workshops to businesses and corporations, along with Haridas, on um, Swamiji's success course. And so we were working assiduously for a few months, and we had done a few sort of small workshops and putting out pamphlets and flyers and updating the website and kind of putting on all the appearances that we knew what we were doing, which was just an appearance at the time. And then I got a call from a friend who said, I know someone at Motorola who might be interested. And I said, that's great. My attitude did not sort of match what it perhaps should have. And then I met the man who was the Vice President of Human Resources, and he said, well, could you send me a proposal? I think we might be interested. And I said, sure. I mean, I was almost surly. I was almost angry at him. And so I thought, OK, obviously, wrong attitude. What is the matter here? And I realized that though I was trying to do this, I, was, I didn't want to do it. I didn't like business. And I was afraid I was going to fail. Now, I didn't want to do it. Well, OK, fair enough. But I had been asked to do it, and I had to understand why I didn't want to do it. And I came to the second reason, that I didn't like business. But I didn't like business, which is a pretty broad term, because of the way I was raised. And the it sort of I had a very strong business background that did not attract me in the slightest. And so I thought, well, that's just one way of doing business. Business could be done in a number of ways. Swamiji has been very successful at business. Master was successful at business. There's nothing sinful about business. So I tried to get over that. And finally, it was, I don't want to fail. Well, I was basically failing already. <laughs> and also, I thought, better to fail in your own dharma than to succeed in someone else's dharma. And the fact that this had been asked of me meant that somehow, unless God let it slip through the cracks, that it was <laughs> coming to me and it was something I was supposed to do for now, at least. So I uh, decided I had better make friends with this topic and with this, OK, fine, excellent, let's get in tune with it. And at that time, Dharmadasa and Nirmala said to me, you need to be going to these appointments in a suit and tie. Okay, make friends with the whole thing. I put on the suit, put on the tie. Haridas did the same. Later, we joked that we were sheep in wolves' clothing. <laughs> and we went to this appointment at Motorola. And when I walked in, the, the, my friend, the human resources guy, was nervous and said, well, you're going to meet the CEO. And if you can pitch him, then it'll be great. And if he doesn't like it, then... Well, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> so we went to meet this guy. E even though it was in India, he was an Irishman, he, the CEO of Motorola. It was their mobile phone division. And he, we tried to talk to him for, hi, how are you? Oh, Ireland, wonderful. And how do you like India? And he said, yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> you know, basically, ready, go. And so, said, what, what does your workshop do for people? And I said, uh, well, actually, both Hari Das and my other friend turned to me. And I just. <laughs> and so I had to say something. And Hari Das later said, I was just relieved that when you open your mouth, out didn't come the food prayer. <laughs> and so I said, well, our workshops help people to achieve work-life balance. <laughs> and the CEO said, I don't believe in work-life balance. I am in the fastest growing industry, in the fastest growing economy in the world right now. I don't have time. This is the game. I've told my wife, you can have me for three hours on Sunday, sometime on Sunday. That's all I have right now, because we're in a war. and so." 
that I that stuff doesn't even exist. <laughs> so I said, well, these techniques. I actually just said, okay, master, say something. <laughs> and I said, these techniques help people to master their energy because sometimes we can get disappointed or our energy can get blocked and it can kind of stay stuck and we need to unblock it to be able to focus it. <laughs> and he said, I completely agree. He said, people will get all stuck on something that we changed our minds about three days ago and they're still just spinning their wheels and doing nothing. Excellent, let's do this. And so that began, we had an ongoing contract with Motorola for some time. And suddenly other clients started to come. We uh, ultimately had a, um, another, a mobile phone, a service provider called Vodafone. They're not really well known here in America because they don't use that name, but they own half of Verizon Wireless. So they're the largest, apparently the largest provider in the world, I found out later. Um, and we had to go in to meet the head of sales who was recruiting us and when we walked in he took us not towards his office but towards another office and it was the CEO's office and when we sat down just by the way you're meeting the CEO now we sat down and and when we sat down Haridas's sleeve pulled up a little bit and the first thing the man said to us was I see you're wearing the astrological bangle <laughs> and he said I have read that book, Autobiography of a Yogi, very good book. He said, I want to learn that Kriya Yoga. I heard you were from the Ananda Foundation and I wanted to meet you myself. <laughs> so we were seeing that the magnetism was shifting. Now, the next point, in addition to attuning yourself, making yourself friends with the subject, is keeping the attitude positive. And I had an experience with uh, this that challenged my positive attitude. I had told the people at Vodafone, send the check not to the address listed on the business card, but to my personal home address instead. And they said, yes, yes, yes. And finally they said the check was sent to that address. Now, that address was the address of my accountant, and my accountant was mad at me at the time, as was I at him, because I got the bill for the ten things he had done, and my only dispute was that he hadn't done eight of those things. <laughs> and, but he said, I certainly have, and so there was this dispute. He said, pay, I said, let's talk, and so there was sort of a stalemate. And now this check <laughs> was going to his office. And so, I, at that time, I was thinking about how Divine Mother gives us something that always looks like the worst thing, but turns out to be the best thing. And Master said, just that thing we don't want to happen, it happens to us. But then Divine Mother has a gift in mind. And so I said, Divine Mother, I don't see how this could possibly be a good thing. I dare you. <laughs> to show me how this could be anything but bad. <laughs> and so I went on, and Haridas and I were continuing to go around uh, Delhi, and we got a phone call when we were out in Delhi from Vodafone, from the, the HR guy who said, you know what, that check came back because the office, it was undeliverable. The office was sealed, closed. And so just why don't you come back? I have it right here. I can give it to you. And so I thought, oh, opportunity to meet the client again. Anytime you can meet the client, it's excellent. So we went in to meet the client. We were already dressed in our battle armor. And so we went in and he said, we really liked your program. And in fact, I want to help people all over Vodafone take this program. So I'm going to refer you to all of my counterparts in each one of the different states. And then later he called me and so I thought, well, Divine Mother proved herself right there. And later he called me and he said, you know, I, was, I got this autobiography of a yogi book and what is this Kriya Yoga? I, I want that. And about a year later, he took Kriya initiation. 
So sometimes we don't even know why something happens to us. Sometimes it isn't just for us. It may be in very well, Master was sending us back there for him. Now, these are different ways in which we can attract success in our different projects. But our projects, our goals, all of the outward things we're doing, though important, are not why we're here. And by here, I don't mean here, I mean earth, being here on earth. We're here be to love God and to find freedom in God. So how do we apply these two principles to that ultimate goal? Well, to achieve success, we have to believe that it is possible. To find freedom in God, we have to believe that we can. And not that someone can or that other people have, but that each one of us can, even in this lifetime. Yogananda said at a Kriya initiation that through the practice of Kriya, you should strive to become at least a Jivan Mukta in this lifetime. A Jivan Mukta means freed while living. It means you cannot generate new karma. It's the first stage of liberation. And it's, is there, are there higher stages? Yes, but let's say we're liberated enough at that point. He said, strive for that in this lifetime. And we have to believe that that's possible. And he said at that same Kriya initiation, among those gathered here, there will be, quite, there will be a few siddhas and quite a few jivan muktas. And that wasn't, he wasn't in the Himalayas surrounded by Indian yogis. He was in, in Mount Washington, south of Pasadena, off of Route 110. And that was not some long time ago. It was 1948. Many of us were alive during that time. So we have to believe that it's possible. And recently we have lost a number of dear friends, in, including Naya Swami Leela. And as Swamiji mentioned on Monday, he said, I felt that she was free spiritually. I searched her life and saw not one flaw. And after that uh, astral ascension ceremony, I was talking to Roma, who's one of uh, Leela's close friends, and she said, I was so encouraged by that. She said, we think that we, we see all these little things about ourselves, and we think that those things are us, that they define us, but we're not those things. And so if Leela can be free spiritually, let us all feel that we too can be free spiritually. Swamiji said that also at the astral ascension of Leela's husband, David. And he said it uh, at probably several others. I know Paula Swigert was one other person. He said that of people we knew, people who walked among us. And so as we also walk among us, let us feel that we can do that in this lifetime. And let's keep our attitude positive. Any apparent setback, say, Divine Mother, okay, what do you have in mind? I dare you to make this into a happy ending. Recently, Ram and Dikshini were parking their car outside of our ashram at Ananda LA on Highland Avenue, and their car was hit by, as they were still in it, parking. Ram was coming to give the Sunday service, and I said, Divine Mother, okay, how can this possibly be good? His car got hit, he's coming to give the service, you know, for you. How is this, how, this can't be a good thing, it can't even be neutral. <laughs> And I sort of philosophize that maybe, yes, the person's life had been spared because of various logic that I won't go into, but still, it was kind of speculative and good if it were true, but still. So <laughs> I just heard from Ram, Darveen and I were having tea with the two of them, and they said, you know our car that got hit? So it went to the body shop, and it was the other guy's fault, so it was covered, and we got a rental car for the time it was in the body shop. When we got the call to pick it up, we got a second call saying, we're so sorry, but we hit your car <laughs> in the body shop. <laughs> Which is a good place to have it hit. And so they said, we, <laughs> Ram saw it and said it was horrible. They fixed the damage that they had caused. They fixed the original damage, and they fixed some other damage that had been on the car from a previous little fender bender. All for free. So Divine Mother had something in mind for them as a gift. So what does it look like when we're free? I feel 
It's really expressed well, uh, perfectly really, by Swamiji in the Naya Swami vow. And I think this, is exp this expresses the consciousness that each one of us will have, perhaps in this lifetime, when we attain freedom, whether we take a vow of formal renunciation or not. It says, from now on, I embrace as the only purpose of my life, the search for God. I will never take a partner, or if I am married, I will look upon my partner as belonging only to thee, Lord. In any case, I am complete in myself, and in myself will merge all the opposites of duality. I no longer exist as a separate entity, but offer my life unreservedly into thy great ocean of awareness. I accept nothing as mine, no one as mine, no talent, no success, no achievement as my own, but everything as thine alone. I will feel that not only the fruit of my labor, but the labor itself is only thine. Act through me always, Lord, to accomplish thy design. I am free in thy joy and will rejoice forever in thy blissful presence. Help me in my efforts to achieve perfection in this, my holy vow, for I have no goal in life but to know thee and to serve as thy channel of blessing to all mankind. God bless you.